Curious George Discovers Space. Curious George Discovers Space. Adaptation by Monica Perez, based on the TV series teleplay written by Craig Miller and Joe Fallon. Are you curious about outer space? George is too. Come along and see what's happening at the Space Center. Professor Wiseman invited George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, to visit her at the Space Center. Professor Einstein and Professor Pizza needed help, and she thought they might be able to lend a hand. Or more than one, as it turned out. How can we help? asked the man. The scientist began to brief the man on his first mission, to restock the space station's food supply. The astronauts on the space station had discovered they only had one peanut left to eat. The man with the yellow hat was planning to ride a space shuttle up through Earth's atmosphere into space. He would enter orbit around Earth and pass near the space station in order to make his delivery. The man would get to experience weightlessness. How would you like to float inside a spaceship? Of course, George was disappointed he wouldn't be able to come along. But in order for the man to release the supplies, he needed to be able to push four buttons at the same time. The man only had two hands. He couldn't do that, but a monkey could. George was thrilled to help. The hungry scientists on the space station would soon have more than one peanut to eat. George would also deliver some new supplies to help them with science experiments. You must launch the payload at exactly the right moment, Professor Einstein said to George. George nodded. He would have to listen to instructions carefully. Do you think that would be hard for one little monkey? Liftoff was a success, but then George wanted to look at the supplies. He took them out to play, but he couldn't get them back inside quickly enough. George missed the payload launch. He passed right by the space station without sending the supplies. George would have to orbit Earth one more time. George, you have enough fuel for only one more orbit. You have to get the supplies back in their containers. The next time you pass the station will be the last chance. Then we have to bring you home, warned Professor Wiseman. George was used to cleaning his room. It was good practice for cleaning up the mess in the spaceship. He was ready in time to launch the supplies. Hooray, they made it to the space station. George had one more task to complete. He had to make it back to the ground safely. To do this, the shuttle had to re-enter Earth's atmosphere at the right moment. It was a good thing George listened to instructions this time. He pulled the lever that controlled the ship's direction. He could now land the ship back at the space center. His friends congratulated him on a successful mission. On to our next problem, said Professor Pizza, once the shuttle mission was over. We are having trouble with our Mars rover. The controls are getting stuck here at the Space Center. We are worried that when it actually lands on Mars, it will also get stuck on the rocks, added Professor Einstein. A Mars rover is a vehicle specially made for exploring the red planet and sending information back to Earth, the man explained. They're testing the new rover here at the Space Center. George thought the Mars rover would be fun to drive, but he soon learned that they were operated by remote control only. Professor Einstein offered everyone a piece of chewing gum as he explained the sticky situation in the Space Control Center. You know there's a no gum rule in here, Einstein, said Professor Pizza. Ah. You're right, said Professor Einstein. He opened a large metal drawer and threw his gum out. George was excited to see the launch of the latest Mars rover. 
he hoped they could figure out this problem together. They sat around a table to talk and plan. The man asked, Since Mars has lower gravity than Earth, is it possible the problem wouldn't even happen there? Professor Pizza agreed. That's certainly possible. If the pull of Earth's gravity is causing the sticking, it might not stick in Mars' low gravity. With the lower gravity on Mars, you would be three times stronger there, said Professor Wiseman. If the rover sticks, maybe we can get it going again by giving it a good push. George imagined how strong he would be on Mars. George wanted to help, but he was tired, and nothing puts a monkey to sleep like a lot of adults talking. The last thing George heard was the man saying, if only we could send someone to Mars to push it. George fell fast asleep. He dreamed he was going to be the first monkey headed to Mars. In his dream, Professor Wiseman told him, it's an important mission, George, if the rover sticks, your job is to give it a good push. The man was going on the space mission with George. How lucky. George wouldn't be lonely on his trip. When the ship finally landed on Mars, George was sitting on the top of the Mars rover. When it was released, he went with it. The rover bounced along the surface of the red planet. George was on a runaway vehicle. Lucky for George, he found the remote that controlled the rover. He was able to slow down the rover. Phew! He also had a book about the Mars terrain. Now he could explore Mars. George rolled up to a very deep, very wide valley that looked like the Grand Canyon, only much larger. The book told him it was called the Valais Marniers. George also found the Olympus Mons the highest volcano in our solar system. It had a great view. He wished his friend could enjoy it too. At last, at least, George could see where his rocket had landed. He began to drive the rover back toward the spaceship. But that's when the rover got stuck. George opened a panel and discovered great big globs of green gum were clogging up the controls. No wonder it kept sticking. Luckily, in the low gravity of Mars, George was able to use his super strength to pick up the vehicle and carry it back to the ship. That was when George woke up from his dream. Now he knew why the real Mars rover was getting stuck. He led the scientists back to the control room and pointed out a gummed up panel. Professor Einstein had been using the rover control system as a trash bin by accident. Oops the professor said. Do you think the Mars rover was able to launch after all? After the control panel had been cleaned? Of course. It's a good thing monkeys are dreamers, the man said. George agreed. He had many dreams as big as the one about traveling to Mars. Next stop, Pluto. The end.